Previously, we had defined our problem to build a web backend and another backend for smart devices for a real estate agency. We started by creating the KB Engine Nexus and a transaction called Property. So far, we've only told Genexus that at some point we'll ask it to generate the web application in Ruby. Therefore, after creating the transactions, Genexus will have to implement them in this platform. But to do so, we still have to complete the environment settings. For example, specify a location for the database and a name for it, among other things. We could store the programs in database locally or in the cloud. We will do the latter just by changing a property value. To do this, we'll open the Preferences area in the Knowledge Base. In the default generator properties, which in our case is Ruby, we look for the Deploy to Cloud property that is set to No by default. We change it to Yes. Just by doing this, all the necessary information will be automatically configured for the cloud. Everything is now ready to try our web application in Ruby. We press F5 to have Genexus generate it. As we can see, Genexus shows the tables that will be created in the database in the cloud. In our case, it will be the table that the property transaction will work on. We select to create it. Genexus creates the table and the Ruby programs for our transactions. In this case, we have one called Property. Next, it uploads them to the cloud and opens a browser with the development menu automatically created for us to run our objects and give them a try. This menu is known as the Developer menu. If you are already familiar with web development in Genexus, you can skip this part and move on to the next video. As an example, we'll enter a property. We can see the web interface that was automatically created by Genexus. We don't need to assign an ID because it'll be auto-numbered. If we try to leave this field, we get a warning that it's empty. Let's enter a name. We can see that the entry date has today's date as default due to the default rule that we created before. We could change it or leave it as it is. If we try to leave the address field without entering a value, the error rule doesn't allow us to do so. We'll enter an address. Now we'll select a photo of the front of the house. Lastly, we select an operation. We'll confirm. And we can see that the property has been successfully entered into the system. In this way, we could continue developing the entire web backend. But, what about the backend for mobile devices? What kind of application do we have in mind for the smart device? This will be the topic of the next video.